forehead, that orange dot. And she said, it helps me to remember Ram. So what did Hanuman do? He went and painted his whole body with kumkum. The whole body orange. His only desire is to hear about, to glorify, to serve, and stay in the association of those who are serving Lord Ram. And to preach his glories so that others can come to his service. When we say that Ram is equal to Krishna, there is a distinction. Ram may be infinitely attractive, but Krishna fully manifests that attractiveness that he will deliver even those who hate him. The demons want to speak of his devotees. Ravana, when killed, he didn't get liberated. He got unlimited wealth and enjoyment, even greater than Ravana, and Ravana's enjoyment and wealth was greater than the demigods being killed by Nishinga previously. King Achedi, Shishupa, powerful, wealthy king. So, Ramachandra, when he left this world, he liberated all the devotees in Ayodhya. And we're not just talking about the people. Every one of the species that were in his kingdom of Ayodhya, when he wrapped up his manifest pastimes, he brought them all with him. And Hanuman, he says, my Lord is so merciful. I mean, some devotee who loved Ram glorified him, Patita Pavana Sita Ram. Srila Prabhupada one time said, Ram's not Petit Pavan, Lord Chaitanya is Petit Pavan. But out of love, the devotee glorified Ram. Yes, certainly. You don't need wealth. You don't need good birth. You don't need education. You don't need strength, any qualities of this world. I'm perfect. I'm the proof of it. I'm a forest beast. I'm a monkey. One can be a demigod or a demon. One can be old or young. One can be like a beast or a bird. Lord Ramachandra will take and accept anyone's surrender and service to him. He's so kind. As it said, the unduplicious affection that he has for his devotees. When compared... Krishna delivered the entire universe, all living entities, as did Lord Chaitanya. This is explained by Haridas Thakur and Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya was very he pleased to hear Haridas glorify himself in that fashion. How has he understood my mood and mission completely? How? But he didn't carry on the discussion anymore. That's enough said about that in the mood of a devotee. I don't, let's not talk about my glories, liberating the entire universe. And of course, immediately the unconscious, the sleeping living entities, they are immediately refilling the vacancy of the universe after the Lord liberates them. Lord Ramachandra is so very merciful. He stated when the Vishna, a demon by birth, came to surrender to him. And it's worth noting that he got the counsel of Hanuman and how to approach the Lord so that he could surrender at the Lord's lotus feet. So many of the other monkeys, when Ram said, what should I do? Vibhishna, the brother of Ravana, this is when they're ready to wage war. He's coming here to surrender and join our side. What should I do? Almost without exception, everybody said, don't trust him. He's a rakshasha. Drive him out. Kill him. Lord Ram said, anyone who surrenders once, who takes the vow, I surrender unto you, meaning who surrenders unto me, from now until the end of, the of time, I will never reject him. So merciful. There's, a, there's a, another uh, 
two verses that are just exceedingly ecstatic where the Lord says, Glorious is the master who does not leave his servant. And glorious is a servant who never gives up his service to the master. Glorious is the, ser the master who, upon even the servant giving up his service, will go and catch him by the hair and drag him back to his lotus feet. Ramachandra is such a merciful Lord. A very good reason why we worship him. We take great solace in the fact that Krishna is even more so, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is even more so, absorbed in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So very, take it, take the love, dance in love of Godhead, chant, become happy. Lord Chaitanya, in his Leela, he, he had interesting reciprocations. He met one devotee in South India at Madurai, a Brahmin who invited him to lunch. He said, please come, accept lunch at my house. And so after he'd done his bath, etc., came to the house, the Brahmin hadn't started cooking. He goes, what's going on? He said, my Lord, Lakshman hasn't brought back any fruits or roots yet for Mother Sita to cook. How can, I, how can I prepare anything for you? When Lord Chaitanya heard that bob, that mood of this devotee of Lord Ram, he was very pleased. This is a devotee on a level like Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. When he went to Moda Druma Dweep, was praying, we usually say, he got the darshan of Sita Ram and Lakshman. Saw him sitting under the banyan tree. And Lakshman got up and very slowly walked toward him and said, My dear guest, please accept these fruits for lunch. It's all we have to offer you. Please be satisfied with them. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur accepts the offering, the generosity of Lakshman. And the vision disappears. And he's left crying in ecstasy. That Brahmin in South India in Madurai had the same qualification that he was ab so absorbed in the Leela of Sita Ram, Lakshman, that he wouldn't cook until it, Lakshman had brought back the necessary boga. So then he began cooking. Quickly, the Lord took Prashadam around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was late. And uh, then he realized that the Brahmin wasn't eating. My dear sir, why aren't you eating? Why are you fasting? He said, how can I eat? Why would I maintain this life? Ravana has kidnapped Sita. And Lord Chaitanya preached to him that Sita is transcendental that a gross materialist can't touch Sita, can't see Sita, he can't violate Sita. Impossible. It was a chaya Sita, a shadow Sita. And he consoled the Brahman in that way, and he took prasadam. He was able to maintain his body and soul together. Lord went down to Rameshwar and he found a Korma Purana, original Purana on the palm leaves, very ancient. And when he saw that it was confirmed in, the, in that Purana that, you know, when she crossed this circle of fire that Lakshman had left to protect her, stay in this fire, the circle, and you'll be safe. No one can enter it. But when she crossed that, wanting to serve the sannyasi who came to her home. Agnidev took her, protected her, and instead a shadow sita, a materialistic, what would look to be like a regular woman, most beautiful but a regular woman, was captured by Lord Ram. And when the battle was over and 
Ram was able to liberate Sita and reunited with her. When she came, it's another.